Hi, you guys. I'm here with my happy sloth. <laughs> Wanted to give him some FaceTime too. Um, I have a story that I want to share with you and it happened to me yesterday. And it is about being open to the flow of the universe. <laughs> And it has to do with live music because in my life, that is how I have really been able to feel the flow of the universe and to connect with and to partner with and to step into the flow of the universe. So I don't know if that is true for everybody, but I know that that has been true for me. And so today is Monday, Monday, May 2nd. And, uh, Mickey Hart and Planet Drum and Bob Weir and Wolf Brothers just played the Frost Amphitheater last night, Sunday night. And the show wasn't on my radar. I don't even remember how I how it kind of came across my radar, but it didn't happen until just a few days ago. And I really want to get Mickey Hart on the Groove Therapy podcast because he does a lot with live music and healing and drumming and and it's just yeah, he speaks my language. So I really want to have him on the podcast. And of course, I would love to have Bobby on the podcast too, and Phil and anybody, you know, Bill Kreutzmann. And um, I'd love to have them all. So I'm not stopping at Mickey Hart, but I just really want to have a conversation with him. So probably Friday, I started kind of thinking about going to the show. But I didn't have a ticket for the show. I didn't have anybody that I knew personally that was going. I mean, I'm sure, well, I know, I know a lot of people that went, but like none of my friends were like, hey, Leah, you want to go to the show with me? And, and I, I actually travel a lot by myself because for me, that is how I am most often able to step into the flow of the universe. When I don't have somebody else's energy to have to navigate or to um you know make plans with it just allows me to open up to the experiences that I'm supposed to have and I like to travel that way so I was you know debating on whether I should go to the show and and on Saturday I was kind of tossing it back and forth I threw it up on Facebook that like hey does anybody have an extra ticket for me I felt like there was an experience that I needed to have at that show. And it felt like something that was going to like come together in a kind of magical way, not like a, I'm going to buy a ticket to the show and I'm just going to go. So I, I knew that there was something out there. So I threw it out to Facebook. I had a couple of people be like, I don't think they're sold out. And you know, Oh, my friend has a couple extras, but I wasn't really looking for that experience. I even talked to a friend who had a ticket, but then at that time I didn't, I wasn't fully committed. And so I kind of let that pass. And then he didn't have it on Sunday when I was, when I had decided to go, cause I was in the hot tub Saturday night and I love to spend time in my hot tub. It's like my place to, to vision and just to like get grounded and connected and self care and all that. So I was in the hot tub Saturday night and I just really intuitively felt like I needed to go to the show, like that I needed to be there. And I even imagined what I was going to wear to the show. And so I was like, okay, I need to be there. So um, Sunday I woke up, I had some work that I needed to do and actually I didn't finish it by the time that I decided to leave and that was okay. Um, so I decided to drive down to the show, didn't have a ticket and didn't know really anybody that was going to be there specifically that I had plans with, although I knew that I was going to see people that I knew. So, but my intention was really to open up to the experience that I was supposed to have and to literally step into the flow of the universe and just allow myself to receive and like energetically, I just, a lot of things have been happening for me that have been showing me that like, I'm on the right path to keep following this path and just like little pats on the back from the universe. Um, and cosmically there's a lot going on. We're in an eclipse season and I am not an astrologer. So I rely on the experts to tell me what's going on, but energetically I can feel like there's a lot up in my own life and just universally. So I feel like, oh, and plus we're celebrating Beltane, which, or May Day, which in high school, my favorite book 
was The Mist of Avalon. It's probably still my favorite book in the whole world. And to not go too long into that story, it's, it's really about, um, well, it talks about pagan celebrations because it's about the, the intersection between paganism and, and Christianity and like, and from the females though, because it's the King Arthur tradition told by the eyes of the females. So Morgan Le Fay from the old pagan tradition is a head person and then also Queen Guinevere, which brings in Christianity. So both of those women are like very strong women in that book. And uh, and Beltane is a is a celebration that they talk about. So I've, I've known about Beltane for a long time. And um, so that was happening last night. And I was just like, this is exactly where I need to be. So I drove down, talked to my friend on the way down there. And I was like, yep, I'm going to walk up at 530. I'm going to get my ticket six o'clock. I'm going to be in the show. And it's all happening. Krista just texted me. It's all happening, <laughs> which is who I was talking to. Thank you, Krista. <laughs> um, words from the universe, right? How do we receive things from people from the universe? So I, I arrive and my first thing was to find free parking because <laughs> parking was $30. But, you know, if I don't have to pay $30, I'm not going to pay $30. So uh, I knew on a college campus I could find free parking. So I said my mantra, safe, easy, free parking, safe, easy, free parking, and just really opened myself up to that. Well, I pulled into this lot and there was somebody that was pulling out of a spot. So I was like, perfect, here's my safe, easy, free parking. So I pulled into the spot and I, I thank the universe for providing for me because we have to state our gratitude whenever we receive something like that. And, or at least we should, I advise you to. Um, and then I, you know, got myself out of my car and it was literally like just a walk down the sidewalk and the, the venue was like right around the corner. So, so close to the venue, walk down there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put my hand in the air, my finger up. Right. So I put my finger in the air and I had one woman come up to me and she was like, how much do you, what do you want to pay? I paid $85. My parents, like they had to buy extra tickets because they they didn't have a seat or something like that, which I felt bad for her. But it's like, sorry, I just got here. I'm going to see what happens because my husband is an amazing ticket guy. Anybody who knows Aaron or Taylor, or whatever you know him by, uh, he can procure tickets like that. And so when I first started dating him, he taught me how to get free tickets. And <laughs> I did that for a while. Um, and it's just fun sometimes to play the ticket game, like just to see what will happen. And honestly, and I'll get to that in a minute, but I just wanted to see what would happen because I knew that there was something there for me. And sometimes we have to be open to receiving that because we don't know what it is, but it's there for us. And if we, if we don't allow that universal connection to happen, then we won't receive it. So I declined the woman who wanted to sell me her tickets for $85. And then I walked a little bit further down. I had another guy come up to me and ask me for $90. And I was like, no, I'm okay. Then I ran into some friends and I started talking to them and like the line was super long. <laughs> um, and they were in the front and they were like, oh, you can come with us. Uh, but the guy was like, but she doesn't have a ticket. And I was like, that's right. And they were like, well, you don't have a ticket. <laughs> People kind of freak out about that nowadays. I was like, no, I'm going to play the ticket game and we're going to see what happens. And um, so, and I was starting to get like, oh, should I reach out to this guy who I thought had a ticket? Because they're about to go in and I could just walk in with them and it would be easy because I, I don't know who else is there that I know. I was like, no, I'm going to slip out of line, let you guys go in. I'm going to see what happens. So they went on in and I was there was probably like two other people with their fingers up so there was not a large amount of us looking for tickets and so i didn't want to stand right beside somebody somebody else so i like kind of found my own spot by a tree and i had my finger up and uh somebody walked by and said something about a miracle like grumbling about a, a miracle and it kind of made me like question do i really want to be doing this like i can pay for a ticket but uh, i just really felt like I needed to receive a ticket in that way. 
So, you know, have these thoughts go through my head. Oh, and also I had already written out a message to my friend who I thought probably still had a ticket and I was about to send it to him. But I was like, no, I'm gonna stand here for just a couple more minutes. I'm gonna put my phone down so that I don't have, I, like, I'm not asking the universe for a ticket, but then also have my exit strategy right here too. Like that's not clear communication. So I put my phone to the side. I stood there with my hand up in the air, my finger up, and I turn around like literally less than 60, 60 seconds later. And I see this gorgeous couple walking towards me and the woman has the biggest smile on her face and she's looking right at me and they're coming my way. And so they walk up and I was like, hi. And I was like, I like your outfit, you know, complimenting the woman. And uh, the guy hands me a ticket and he's like, here you go, have a great show. And I was just like, oh my God, thank you so much. And so, you know, I thank them. They gave me a hug. They we we exchanged some words and then they were walking off and something inside of me said tell them about your podcast and i said hey i have a podcast it's called groove therapy it's on osiris media you guys should check it out it's all about the intersection between health and wellness and live music and i was like oh let me let me give you something and i realized that i had an embodied groove sticker which let me show you my embodied groove sticker See my embodied groove sticker. So I had my embodied groove sticker in my little, my little uh, waist thing. And uh, so I give it to them and I'm like, this is my live music dance class that I teach. And the guy was like, oh, I, that's what I do. I perform music for movers. I've been doing that for like 15 to 20 years. And he told me a couple of the things that he had done. And I was like, wow, I was like, we were supposed to meet. That is so cool. And, uh, and then I, I was like, yeah, I'm really here for Planet Drum. I'm really excited to see. I was like, I really want to have Mickey Hart on the podcast. And I was like, if you know Mickey, you should tell him that he should be on my podcast. And his girlfriend looks over and she's like, well, actually, he does know Mickey. And I was like, what? And then she looks at him. She's like, sorry. <laughs> like, it's okay. Don't worry. I'm not going to like, you know, follow you around and make sure that you introduce me to Mickey Hart. Um, but he's like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I can definitely make a connection. And I was like, that would be so amazing. Oh my gosh. We were definitely supposed to meet. This is so cool. Thank you so much. So we exchanged numbers. He was like, his name is Gabriel Harris. And he was like, you should check out my website. It's gabeharris.com. I was like, okay, I will definitely do that. We'll be in touch. And because I, I also, when he told me that he played music for a movement, I was like, oh, are you going to be at Hog Farm Hideaway? Because I'm trying to put together my lineup for Hog Farm Hideaway, which by the way, Embodied Groove is going to be at Hog Farm Hideaway. So if you're coming to the festival or thinking about it, you should definitely make sure to be there. Um, we are, I'm going to be uh, opening, well, not opening, but Friday night, 6 p.m. There's a set at uh, the what are they calling it? Like the Healing Oasis or something like that. And then also on Saturday at, I believe it's 1 p.m., 1 to 2 on Saturday and 6 to 6.45 on Friday. So come check Embodied Groove out. It is my live music dance experience that I have. Usually it's done with live musicians, but not always because I have to show up in the ways that I can and it's not always available with live music. Um, but anyway, so I, I told him about that. I was like, hey, are you available for Hog Farm Hideaway? He's like, when is it? No, I'm going to be out of town. I was like, okay, well, I'm always looking for, for musicians. He's like, great, let me know. So they leave. I'm like freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, how many times did I almost shut that down? Almost shut that down. Almost shut that down. Like even Saturday, I was like, should I just take this ticket? And I was like, no, no, this, is, this isn't it. Sunday, oh, what should I do? Should I buy a ticket? Should I do this? Should I do that? Like my brain is trying to tell me all of these things. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I need to be open. I need to be open. So I was super excited that I listened to myself and I was open and I made that connection because I knew that I was supposed to meet Gabriel Harris and his beautiful girlfriend, uh, Bovani was her name. And so I call my best friend and I like tell her all about it. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Show hasn't even started and this is so amazing. 
So I talk to her and then I get in line, which I kind of like snuck around the opening of the line because it was ridiculously long. I didn't even check to see how long it was, but it was way longer than I really wanted to wait it. So I kind of snuck around. I'm only one person. I can easily flow into the crowd. And so I'm standing there and um, I was talking to my best friend when I kind of slid into the crowd. And then I got off the phone with her and then I'm standing there and everybody else is in conversation with somebody around them. So I'm just like standing there by myself, waiting to go into the show. The line was taking forever. And then all of a sudden my friend Tracy comes up beside me and she's like, Hey, and I was like, Oh my God. Hey. And she's like, Mark just told me, Mark's her husband. She's, she's like, Mark just told me to find a friend. She's like, I can't wait in that line. He was like, we'll find a friend. And here you are, you're my friend. And I was like, yeah, I'm your friend and you're mine because I'm here by myself right now. And she was like, oh my God, I manifested you. This is exactly what I needed. So I told her about my ticket and like how, yes, of course, we're supposed to be here together. And so we end up standing in line together and we're like walking towards the, the front of the line. And she was like, oh, well, Mark's been here for a, a while. Like he's got a great spot down front and he's got his blanket and everything laid out. And she was like, do you have a spot that you're going to? And I was like, no, I'm here by myself. I'm just here to have the experience that I'm supposed to have. And so she's like, well, come on down front with us. So I walk in with Tracy, we go, you know, we go to the bathroom, she gets a drink, I fill up my water. Um, she ended up buying two white claws and they made her open them both. So then she was like, hey, do you want my other white claw? And I was like, sure, why not? She's like, hey, we'll celebrate. Um, so then I had a free, free drink, which I did buy her another one uh, to reciprocate that. But um, yeah, then we walk down to the spot and Mark is sitting in the spot and it's like this amazing spot, right? Exactly where I wanted to be and space. I had a blanket underneath me so I could take off my shoes and dance barefoot because most of the frost actually is grass, but that part, because it was a, it was a, a flat space, it was concrete. So it felt really good to have a blanket under my feet. Um, and it was just so amazing and the show was great and I loved experiencing Planet Drum and you guys want to hear the kicker? After the show, I researched Gabe Harris and found out that he is Joan Baez's son and she was pregnant with him at Woodstock. He was in her belly at Woodstock and I was like, oh my god mind blown wow thank you goddess thank you god thank you universe thank you source thank you guides thank you angels thank you everything that got me to that point and has led me here today which today i got to interview peter ansbach from goose about music and had the most inspiring and amazing conversation. And that episode will be out on May 27th on Groove Therapy. If you're not subscribed to that or listening to it, you absolutely should. <sighs> so I wanted to share my experience of trusting, opening up to the universe and really following where the energy leads. And if I can do it, you can do it. And that is what I am here to share because this hasn't always been my life, but <laughs> this is my life right now. And I am so grateful for it. And yes, there has been a lot that has gone into making this my life right now, but it's not because I'm somebody special or there's anything special about me. It's just because I have been willing and able to be present and to listen and to do the things that I know to do to get me present and to listen, which I would love to share that with you. And that will be another video because all of it has been the work that I have done, but it's not even about work. It's about opening. It's about receiving. It's about listening. It's about trusting. And that's what happens when you trust and you open up to the flow of the universe. So that's my story. 
I love you very much. And uh, share something that you have manifested or that you have experienced by opening up to the flow of the universe. I would love to hear. Mwah! Bye, everybody.